Hello, everybody. This is Carl Freud with Cambrian AI Research again. Today, we've got Mike Henry joining us, CEO founder of Mythic. Uh, Mike talked to us about a year ago um, about what his plans were. Um, he's made some recent announcements, so I thought, hey, it's a good time to check in with Mike and see what's what's happening back at the farm. Hey, Mike. Hey, Carl. It's great to talk to you again, and uh, happy to be here. Yeah, our pl pleasure's all ours. Um, so um, um, if those of you who saw our earlier video or have read some of the reports we've written on Mythic, you'll know that they are focused on using analog computing for inference processing. So Mike, why don't we just start there? What, what are you doing with analog and why, why is it important? So, you know, analog, we feel really addresses the challenges that are emerging when you need to deploy very powerful artificial intelligence to the edge. You know, the edge is, is not a data center. You're, you're not going to see, uh, you know, state of the art silicon. You're not going to see, you know, like uh, three nanometer state of the art chips. It's often, um, you know, embedded platforms. It has processors that might exist in older nodes. It's very power and cost constrained. And it does you know, require special technology because it's really hard to get performance in those older nodes and the older you know, memory systems and things like that. Um, with analog, you can get uh, better performance and better power efficiency than state-of-the-art silicon and state-of-the-art processes. And you can do that in older process nodes like 40 and 28 nanometer. And you know, so this gives us very cost and power effective um, processing, but it also very high levels of performance, you know, up to you know 25 tera ops in our first product. So um, and it, it just is really responding to the to the trends in the industry. You know, it, it's really time to get off of the digital trajectory and, and get onto a new trajectory that allows us to get far greater performance and, and still keep the cost and power in check. Wow. So that's a lot of that's a lot of tops. Uh, for all process technology. It's and we're just getting started. Yeah. And, and, and that's at very low power, right? Yeah, so, so our first product's at, at three watts, um, which is, you know, it's about the, the uh, um, threshold uh, before you, you, know, you start needing a fan. So being able to go to um, customers who might be used to larger, higher power systems with big fans on them and saying, you can have something much smaller, it can be fanless, it can be a lot more reliable and you can get a lot more performance than you're currently getting, you know, is a very appealing um, value proposition to customers. Mm. So that's a market that's primarily dominated by, you know, uh, microcontrollers, and they don't have a lot of AI uh, deployed today. How, how do you go about selling them on the value prop of AI and um, in, in, in your differentiation? So it's start, you know, it, actually we, we tend to see things coming from two different directions. You know, the first direction might be, you know, they start building the prototype for what they envision and, and they might have some very expensive high-end systems that are, you know, maybe they're labeled edge processing, but it's in reality, it might be a 30 watt thousand dollar system. And, you know, it's good for prototyping. It's good for small volumes and the customers really need to scale up and they really see huge challenges in scaling up with such expensive power hungry compute platforms. And so for them, uh, you know, typically the value proposition is saying you can move to a much more cost and uh, cost effective platform, a platform that's a lot easier to get high volume orders in and, and build, you know, reliable embedded systems out of and augment it with our um, compute platform. And you'll get the best of both worlds. You get all that compute you were happy with and you'll have a much more scalable platform when you want to go to larger volumes. So that's the first direction we see. The second direction we see is customers already have high volume embedded products out in the market. You know, anything from like maybe a video doorbell all the way to perhaps a gaming system or a security camera. You know, so they, they already have established product lines out in the field. And again, you, you typically see, you know, especially with the higher volume edge products, um, you know, high volume microprocessors in older technology nodes. In that case, they're struggling for different reasons. They're struggling to get their application to run on, um, you know, it, engines that might be labeled one to five tops, but in reality, the, it's a lot harder, you know, harder to get performance out of the older system. So the actual performance might be a lot lower than that. And again, we can come in and say 25 tera ops of performance, you know, much higher utilization. So you really can realize that performance. 
Um, but in a cost and power profile that you are used to seeing at the edge, you know, we're not asking you to slap a 30 watt system into your, into your device. So both directions is a very appealing story. And it really just, you know, comes down to what journey or part of the journey in the product cycle is the customer at. Interesting. Now, is, are most of the applications vision oriented um, or, or others? So there, I, there are, you know, a lot of things happening at the edge and you see vision, you see, you see um, audio, keyword spotting, voice cleanup. Um, you see other streams of data like vibration analysis and, uh, you know, things like processing small sensors, the tiny ML world. Um, so there's a, a lot is happening at the edge. Now, the reason we chose vision and things adjacent to vision, which might be like radar, LIDAR, it, it really, you know, comes down to the most value is where there's very like high volume streams of data with a lot of rich information in them. Uh, that's where the, the willingness to pay is the highest. And that's mm -hmm. where you can get good margins and you can get really good sticky wins. Um, so cameras are natural, right? There's a lot of information in a scene that you can process to, to enhance your product. Um, you can fuse it with other uh, modalities like LIDAR and radar and really get, you know, almost like 3D, like a much richer, even richer source of information. Um, that being said, like, you know, there are other areas where that same, uh, that same thing applies. Like RF is a good example. Um, it's very high value uh, infrastructure. It's very high volumes of data, lots of rich information to process, lots of really demanding algorithms. And so, you know, RF is a natural extension for us because, you know, it, it checks all the same boxes. So we're not necessarily limited to vision, but we're instead focusing on where there's a high willingness to pay. There's a lot of value and, you know, a lot of rich information and high volumes of data to process. Interesting. Well, I'm sure you had a lot of challenges to get your first uh, analog chip out to market. What are the next challenges you're facing with both in terms of getting this to ramp and scale and volume? as well as getting applications supported on the platform. Yeah, I, you know, I think that the, you know, our company has taken many, uh, many different, there's been many different uh, stages of the journey. You know, I can think back to the earliest days when people told us like, you'll never be able to build even a test chip. And then it was, oh, you'll never be able to build a chip with that many ADCs on it. And we have 20,000 ADCs. And then we did, and we, you know, we had a proof of concept. And then it was, You'll never be able to get accuracy on state-of-the-art neural networks. You're going to be stuck in the old, you know, sci-fi, uh, MNIST kind of. And then we disproved them, and we showed it. And then, and then the doubt goes to you'll never be able to mass produce it. And now we've solved those challenges, and we have a pretty clear path to hitting mass production. Um, and then, you know, and then, and then I think the last kind of uh, the last hurdle always just then becomes the software usability because that ends up being the final bottleneck to revenue is, you know, how do you make your software really easy for customers to use? And um, that is a challenge at the edge. I mean, it's actually a challenge for anybody doing things like quantization or really aggressive pruning or compression or things like that. Um, and, you know, it, it's a challenge to scale that kind of software up and get it broadly usable. It's also a challenge for analog. Um, but, you know, we have a lot, we're making a lot of really steady progress on that and you know, really measure it by the velocity and you know, how fast can somebody get spun up on the platform. So that's the, that's kind of the last frontier. And that's where we're making the really big strides today um, in order to make it a really easy to use platform. Cool. Cool. And of course, you've got development kits available now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We got them shipping out, um, you know, pretty regularly. Um, we we get customers set up on the software flow. Um, you know, right now they're working with perception algorithms like, like object detection, classification, pose, segmentation. Um, you know, some of you, we bounded it within the world of visual perception. It makes the software workload and it makes the um, support a lot easier. So that's what we're currently engaging with customers on. Um, and you were just building the SDK, uh, you know, pretty organically as, as, as each month mm -hmm. goes on. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, right now, I know it's a challenging time for startups as the market uncertainty impact ability to get funding, but are you seeing any reduction in end user demand and interest that goes along with that? Or is this mostly just a short term capital dearth? I think that the, I mean, I mean, I think the finance and capital will affect the funding environment for sure. And so, 
Um, you know, I, I definitely in the last few years, the, the focus on the investor side has been, you know, well, let's plow a lot of money into the market and let's go after companies that are, um, you know, basically pitching really steep revenue ramps and, um, you know, and that, that, that has dramatically shifted. And now, now investors are really looking for companies with a lot of intrinsic value, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of differentiation. You don't necessarily need to be on a very steep revenue ramp because often that never actually uh, comes to fruition. Um, but you have to show that, you know, year after year, um, you will have a sustainable competitive advantage. You know, you have something truly differentiating mm -hmm. under the hood. You're because, not just playing leapfrog. Right? Yeah, exactly. Because I think yeah. the market is learning like what a steamroller NVIDIA is, you know, just year after year, consistently executing on very advanced products. Um, and even companies like Qualcomm and others, you know, are also being very successful in the SOC market. And so you have to be in a different place and you have to be, you have to have very different, unique technology um, in order to build a great company and avoid those steamrollers out there. Um, so investors are looking for that kind of value rather than just making claims about revenue. That, that's been the dramatic shift um, in the funding mm -hmm. market. Um, but, you know, that, it, the, the thing that's interesting is that from a customer perspective, I've seen very little change. If anything, it just mm. continues to build steam. Um, you know, we, I think the reason is that, you know, when I'd say two or three years ago, the market was fairly new. Um, it was, you know, a lot of um, companies were just getting their feet wet, you know, downloading uh, TensorFlow, trying things out. A year ago, we've started seeing a lot of uh, small scale um, prototypes and a lot of like, like field tests and things like that. All of those, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of those out there. All of those are now heading into production. Mm. And I think over the next year or two, you will start to see a tremendous increase in the number of um, you know, products using AI as a core feature in it. So, you know, maybe there's broader slowdowns in the tech market, but I think we're still on the um, inflection point of mm. um, in, in AI at the edge. And I think that market will just only continue to grow year after year. Yeah. Well, one of the beauties, I often advise investors to look at edge AI companies because the data center companies are all going after that steamroller. It's really hard to do. Uh, you got to have something really different, like a Cerebrus, you know, wafer scale engine to uh, differentiate and even be in the game uh, because nobody's going to jump off NVIDIA for a 2x performance advantage, even if you can get it. Yeah, or you, and then wait, wait a year and that 2x becomes yeah, 10x, exactly. right? <laughs> the, next re, the next release of software from NVIDIA alone will take care of yeah. that, right? Um, whereas in the edge, there's really not an 800 pound gorilla, is there? No, there's not. There's, um, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I'm trying to think of like what a 20 pound gorilla would look like. Maybe it's a different animal. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of smaller. That NXP chimpanzee? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe a, one of those. Uh, uh, yeah. So there, um, there's a lot of those um, smaller, and they all have, you know, good market share and they all have, yeah. uh, you know, a long, a, a long track record and a lot of happy customers. And I think, I think in addition to um, there being a lot of players, there's a lot of players who are interested in partnering, you know, NXP knows they're not going to build um, like the hopper architecture, right? But, you know, the, if you can partner, if these kinds of companies can partner with these startups, then, you know, the sum ends up being greater than the individual parts. Mm -hmm. I feel like data center feels almost like a winner takes all zero sum game market um, with a lot of sharp elbows. But at the edge, there's a lot of companies looking to build a very great, you know, set of products and have, you know, a wide variety of products to serve a lot of different variety of customers. And, Having um, in a you know really you know, having great AI processing in your portfolio is really advantageous. So um, yeah, it, it 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 is a great market to be in. Um, you can find your you can find your place to play in to build your company and build your market share, and you're not stepping on a bunch of people's toes. Yeah. And there's not some giant incumbent who's there to try to squash you. That that's that's what really makes it a good market to play in as a startup. That's good. You can focus on meeting the customers' needs, not on beating the competitors' benchmark. Exactly. That's, exactly. That's definitely a better place to be, better place to be. Well, it sounds like you're making great progress. I've always been interested since we first met at the first AI hardware summit. And I said, you're doing analog? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Probably exactly. one of those early guys that said, no, you can't do that. But you've proven <laughs> all wrong and yeah. you've demonstrated that you can do that. 
and deliver high performance, low latency, and and uh, low cost. So uh, I, I I'm really excited about what you're doing and look forward to watching you closely as you move forward in the evolution of your company. Yeah, and and, and likewise, you know, I always appreciate um, you know our conversations, and and it's great to see. Um, you know, I, I remember when you when you took the leap into Cambrian, uh, you know, and I, I, I thought it was a great idea, and it's great to see that continue to grow as well. And I've always enjoyed uh, enjoy talking. So, you know, likewise, pre- always, appreciate the conversation, Carl. Always good to talk with you. Uh, hopefully, we'll see each other at the coming AI Hardware Summit. Maybe share a share a beer or a cup of coffee or something like that. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. All right, Mike. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, if any audience members uh, have any questions, just reach out to me directly. I'll put you in touch with Mike. Sounds great. Great. All right. All right. Take care now. Thanks a lot. You too. All right. Bye.